Hi Stampers, it's Kelly Enns here with Stamping with Kelly and I'm so glad that you're joining me today. I'm going to be making a pinwheel tower card and I'm going to be featuring the new Crane of Fortune um, suite. It's got designer series paper and it's got this beautiful stamp set with these dies and the card that I'm going to be making is a version of a design that I used for club in January of 2022 and this, so you can go back and look at the video of how I made this card too. But um, how it, it works is it folds flat and then when the recipient opens it up, it turns into this amazing 3D card. And I wanted to showcase the dimensions in a quick video. Well, I don't know how quick this is gonna be actually because I'm kind of crafting on the fly. But I wanted to show you the dimensions so that you can make this really easy card on your own. It seems like, a work of art. It seems like it is really overwhelming, <laughs> but I want to show you it's not. And I actually made a whole bunch of these as swaps. So again, they can fit inside a regular envelope. And then this is the swap that I made here. It was using a retired paper called Blackberry Beauty. And this um, I made especially for a very special friend of mine and I love the sentiments in it. So it says, dear friend, how are you? Sending hugs. We've got some of those beautiful new brushed brass butterflies on there. I don't know if you guys could see them. They peek out here too. And then um, going to the next little page here. Oh, sorry, did I skip over this one? Sending hugs, and then my heart is tied to yours. Tug if you need anything. Isn't that special? And then the last panel here is where I will write my message to her. So that, again, can go into an envelope. So you can use any designer series papers, any card stocks with this, and it is a wonderful way of maximizing the paper because you get no wastage which I just want to celebrate every time I make a card like that so let's make this together and um, all you're gonna need are some designer series papers and some card stocks some stamps to go with it as well so the part that I'm going to create first is working from the inside okay so on the inside there's this little rectangular tube that we're going to create and I like to make it out of designer series paper so it's not so bulky so I'm just gonna put my card stocks to the side so I don't get distracted with those I'm gonna bring in my paper trimmer and now is when you have to make some hard decisions <laughs> which designer series paper do you like the least so I know that I like the designs of the back sides of these ones especially so I'm going to put those to the side and make sure that I don't forget and cut those up these ones um, I'm not as keen on and I think I'll probably end up using this side here which is so beautiful and embossed and it's so neutral it's such a blank canvas isn't it great so this here is just begging to be on the little panel of the card something maybe like that and so I might save that but I haven't planned anything out so you guys are kind of here along with me for the ride which one do I want to have hidden maybe this one here is more neutral we're gonna do that one so you still can see a little bit of this designer series paper but you might even see a little bit of it peeking through here so that's why you don't want it to be too crazy of a color um, because then it will just draw attention to it so let's take this one we're going to trim it to four inches okay and I'm going to put this to the side because I can use that again and then I'm going to trim to four and a half inches oh you know I muted everything else on my computer but of course something's going to pop up right <laughs> did you guys hear that noise now I have to make sure I put my cutting blade to the side so can you guys see that the cutting blade goes to the side and I'm going to bring up my scoring blade because I'm going to score at four inches and three inches and two inches and at one inch our scoring and cutting paper cutter is wonderful it's got um, this extendable arm too so it goes up to 17 inches long and it folds away really nice as well I love this little cutter okay so now I've got scores at 
one inch, two inch, three inches, and four inches, leaving a little half inch flap. I'm going to take my bone folder now, and I have to figure out which side I want to be the inside, which is going to be a little bit visible. I think I might do the one with the gold embossing, so it's not completely hidden. Alrighty. So now you can see this tube is kind of coming together, and I just need to adhere it. So I'm going to use my heavy duty tear and tape, and I'm just going to go along like this. Tear and tape is so handy because all you do is just tear it when it's all done. You don't even need snips at all. So let's peel that back. And again, I'm, I've decided that I want this to be a little bit more visible. So that means I'm actually going to put it on the inside of the tube because the outside of the tube has these pieces of, well, in this case, black cardstock, which are adhered to it. Okay. So I'm just going to fold this down so it's nice and straight, making sure that this is all aligned. And then I'm going to make this little tube. There we go. So this it forms the basis of our tower card. So now let's put this to the side and let's start on the next part here. So I want my little panels, so panels being these little cardstock pieces that flap. These ones are um, basic black. I want them to be smoky slate. So I'm just gonna take one sheet of eight and a half by 11 and my paper cutter and I'm gonna show you how to do this. So easy. So at four, and a quarter, which is half of the length this way, I'm going to cut. Half of this is going to go to the side. You can make another card with this. And then, so I've got half of the sheet here, and now I'm going to take it in half the other way. Five and a half is half of 11, and then in half again, which is two and three quarters, and two and three quarters. There you go, you've got your four panels, and these are going to be adhered on to our little base, which will create this card. Okay, so let's put that to the side as well, because on top of these panels, we need to have some designer series paper. So let's figure out, oh, this is hard decision time. Since this piece is already cut and ready to go, I'm gonna take that. It's two inches that we're looking for. Is that right? No, it's two and a half. This one's not gonna work, sorry. I got really excited there for a second. Like It can't be that amazing, can it? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take this one and do um, two and a half inches by four inches. And that's going to create one of the panels here that's going to be bordered like that. Okay, and I know I want to use this one here. So let's figure out which section do we like. I kind of like this guy. I think that would be good. I don't know. Maybe it's better for him not to be right in the middle because if he's right in the middle, then he might be covered up by the little tag or something that I'm putting on there. So let's do one of these ones. I'll try not to overthink it, Kelly. <laughs> Always tough. So again, two and a half by four inches is what we're looking for. And then let's do another one here. I'm looking for just one more because the last panel I want to leave with regular cardstock. So um, I'm going to do three designer series papers and then one that is cardstock so that I can write my message. This seems perfectly plain, doesn't it, on this side? The other side is very bright. This is great. I'm using this cut down six inches by six inches. This paper actually comes 12 inches by 12 inches, but I want to show you how you can play with a design like this and, um, you know, use everything from one of our um, paper shares. I do product shares and I probably, I don't know, maybe contact me if you're in the future watching this. <laughs> um, then I might not be doing one, but you know what? You can always reach out and check with me and see if uh, I have one running. But right now I'm doing a product share for the January to June 2020 mini catalog. Okay, so I've got all these little bits and pieces. Again, these are two and a half inches by four inches. And then these ones are two and three quarters by four and a quarter, okay? So again, maximizing both of those sides of 
sizes of paper. So I'm going to leave that for right now and we're going to start assembling and then we're going to figure out which designer series papers we want on this side. And that's where this one is going to fit. Okay, let's do this first. So I'm using stamp and seal to put this part together. I like using stamp and seal for my all purpose crafting. Um, I find it works really, really well. And if you make a mistake and you have to take it apart, you still can do that. It's not going to be completely glued together forever and ever and ever not able to be repositioned. So um, we do have a stamp and seal plus, which some people like to use for their all purpose crafting. And I think what you have to do is just try it out and see which one you like. So I'm putting these panels on here and using my stamp and seal, I have to break the line of adhesive. So I think that's where some people find that they have issues with this. I'm actually used to this from a previous adhesive that we have. I don't know if you can see, but it's still attached there. So what I have to do is when I finish my line, I just take it to the side. Like I'm doing a little check mark. We had to do this with one of our previous adhesives. So I actually do this with all of my adhesives now. And so it gets me into trouble actually with the Stamp and Seal Plus because then um, that adhesive doesn't work like this. <laughs> so kind of funny that way. Okay, let's start putting these together. Which do I want for my front panel? And what am I doing even? I'm going to use this Crane of Fortune in a few different ways. Let's make a little bit of a plan and see which ones work best together. So I kind of thought that I wanted a crane on one of the panels. And then I grabbed this punch here too. This is the, I think, lovely label punch. Oh my goodness, I should have looked that up before I got on here. But let's put this out and see how this comes together. Okay, so maybe the crane goes on that one because it covers up a lot. And maybe this one has so much going on that maybe we don't really do anything with that panel. I don't know. And then maybe this one here has the saying that goes onto it, something like that. Maybe. I was thinking it would look beautiful. This is how I always design my cards. I'm kind of funny like this. Um, but I was thinking it would be uh, interesting to do maybe sending a thousand well wishes on your way. Oh, you know what I actually do want to do? Put on some of these and emboss it in gold. Um, the little dragonflies, which I think are a symbol of luck, aren't they? Much luck and good fortune. Can we fit all of that on one? Hmm, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? So what if we did that then? I also have a couple of other coordinating things to introduce. This is the soft succulent um, beautiful satin ribbon. So I was thinking of doing something like that along this panel here. So let's put that all together and see what we think. I like it. I feel like this one here could use a little bit more of something. I wonder, check my handy dandy drawers. Oh, you guys, this pays not to clean up. <laughs> So I actually have a whole bunch of these little leaves punched out here in ve from vellum and that's using our fabulous new double bow punch. So this one's a great one because it punches out little sprigs and bigger leaf boughs. So I think that might be good to introduce. I love using vellum as an additional layer because um, it doesn't introduce a new color into the project. It just kind of ties everything together. And what else could we do? I don't know. Maybe we use, I don't really have any other dies handy. Let's take a look at these dies here. They're really fun, aren't they? I didn't grab my gold foil paper either. You know, that's the thing, hey, when you're crafting, it's hard to craft on the go sometimes because you want to you just want to keep pulling from your room so my room actually with my supplies is way on the other side of the basement this is just where i do my online stuff so let's take a look here and see i think this one is nice just by itself i think this crane would be beautiful just like that and then maybe we um do some little sprigs or something like this and who knows maybe i have a little something on the floor here Oh, we could use more designer series paper. Let's see what the back sides of these look like. 
Oh, these are so pretty, aren't they? I wonder what it would look like to cut this out of this paper. Do you think that would look interesting? I feel like it might. We're going to do that too. We'll play around with this. Put together pieces in a fun and different way. But I know for certain that I want to use this gorgeous crane and then die cut it out. So let's work on that first. Okay, I'm going to put this one away because we're not using that one down right now. And we'll put this, all of our bits and pieces up here. And let's start crafting. So I'm using my Baby Boss today. So when you're using the smaller machine, you just have to make sure that your, your paper is cut to fit, okay? So I have to trim a little bit down from this. The size of the plates are three and a half inches, so just a little bit less than that. We'll do three and a quarter, why not? And then now I can stamp on here. This is, I think, a distinctive stamp set, isn't it? Is it? it doesn't say. I don't know if it is or not. I have to check the catalog. But it's got this beautiful brushed look to it. And I've got the soft succulent ink pad, and I was thinking of doing it with that. Let's see how that looks. Cranes are usually white, I think, but this is like an artist's rendering, right? We can choose to have it however we want. Oh, that's cool, isn't it? Oh, I like it. Let's um, blend it a little bit while it's still wet here. I'm going to take some Wink of Stella and just soften some of the lines here. Wink of Stella is a fabulous tool. You can see that some of these lines just showed up like a little bit more dotted than maybe I would have wanted. But that's okay because I can use a Wink of Stella and it actually will move around this water-based ink. And I wanted to use this anyways because Wink of Stella is probably my favorite embellishing tool. It's so cost-effective because you just purchase them this little paintbrush, and then you can add it to all different kinds of projects. There we go, that's looking really good. Artist's rendering, right? It doesn't have to be totally accurate to nature. Okay, there we go. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay, I gotta put this away so I don't put my fingers into it. Now I'm gonna take my plates, they come with these fabulous little markers and instruction on them. So we've got two, three, and four. Now where's my one? Oh, here it is. Number one over here. So um, we're going to do the cutting. So we just need one and two. So placing, I always use one side for cutting and then one side as the plate on the top and it just helps them to last a little bit longer. Let's get that guy. Might need a little bit of washi tape on this. Let's see. Can I get it lined up? <laughs> hmm. Let's use. I don't have washi tape handy. Oh, yes, I do. Here we go. Let's use a little bit of washi tape. I love using washi tape because. It's a low tack tape, so it's not going to damage my paper. And when you're choosing a spot to tape down, it's even better to have it on the background, like whatever you're not using. See how um, most of the tape is going onto this cardstock that's going to be left that I'm not using. Do you know what I mean? As opposed to putting it right down the middle here and potentially, you know, lifting or like damaging or warping even the cardstock that I want to keep. Okay, let's just do this. I am so funny how I craft on this, this grid paper and it likes to slip on me here. Okay, there we go. Let's send 
that through. This is such a great way to get into, oh, look at this, that's funny, to die cutting in such a low cost entry fee. This Baby Boss, I think is at $84. And it's just wonderful because it can fit most of our dies into it, actually. Oh, that's so pretty. Isn't that nice? Oh, I love that. You know what? I might do another... I might do two different sayings on this, actually. Would this work to kind of tuck in behind there? Much luck and good fortune. That might be fun, hey? So relaxing to craft. My kids are away over at their grandparents' house, and I just couldn't wait to get down here and do a little bit of crafting. <laughs> like my, my me time, my happy time. I'm going to add a little bit more texture too by using this background here and just doing a very subtle application with um, some smoky slate, which is the background color here of my cardstock. <laughs> This on and let's see how this looks. I think it might be okay. Stamp that on there. Oh, it's so pretty. It adds just that little bit of texture. So now I can stamp much luck and good fortune over top of it. And for that, I'm going to use our memento, which is our tuxedo black ink. This is the ink that I love using for most of my sentiment stamping is because it um, cleans off almost perfectly just when you stamp it, right? It's not leaving a lot of stain or anything like that. Oh, now I can punch this out. That's so fun. Much luck and good fortune. And then I can put this on here. That. That's really fun. I think I might even put in some of those little leaf sprigs. That would be really fun. Okay, so that'll be the front of my card. Let's do the inside of the card now where I put a little bit more embellishments. Maybe, maybe let's do this saying onto here. We'll keep the sayings kind of um, Kind of onto the same um, shape. You guys can tell how relaxed I am. <laughs> Words are hard. <laughs> okay, sending a thousand well wishes on your special day. I know where I'm going to use those little guys. Oh, guys, I'm, I'm using the wrong ink. Okay, whoa. Concentrate now, Kelly. <laughs> Okay, sending a thousand well wishes on your special day. Stamping in the black. Cover that up. And then let's do, let's, let's just let that dry for a second here. And I'm going to use this panel here along with these cute little dragonflies. And this would be perfect. Oh, I'm so glad I thought of this in time. <laughs> Are you one of those people who just keeps modifying and modifying their art? Leaving those there. And I'm going to do another one, actually. I'm going to do this little sprig here, I think. Maybe down at the bottom. Now you can see I've already matted this up. So all I do when I am crafting like this is get a little piece of scrap paper. Our grid paper works so well for this, but all you wanna do is just mask the edge of that. So it, it pretends like, you know, you haven't already put it together. And then you can go like this. This is gonna be so pretty now. It's really getting me excited. So I'm gonna use my metallic embossing powder, the gold color. 
And that super sticky Versamark ink is just going to stick it all on there. Now you might have a little bit of extra on there. I always have like a little paintbrush handy so I can get off those extra little pieces. I don't mind even though like a little bit of speckling. It kind of gives a textured look, right? We've got a whole sheet of our designer series paper that's textured like that. So now I've done this too many times to know that you should not use a heat tool with embossing powder trays handy. <laughs> Because if you're blowing the embossing powder around, you can only imagine what would happen if um, you blow a whole tray of it. Let's see, can you guys see that? It's starting to turn into that metallic. Let's see if you can see this a little bit more. It's my favorite technique. All right, it's about to start. Here, can you see it turning? Turning metallic y, sinking into the paper, melting. You can do it, you know, as long as you want. I like to do solid images just a hair longer than I would sentiments, just so that it um, really melts and doesn't um, look grainy. All right, that's beautiful. Okay, so that's that panel. And I think this one here, I'm gonna put that, um, sending a thousand well wishes on your special day. And um, let's start putting this together. I haven't decided about this. Let's leave that to the side and we'll see how it all comes together. Okay, so working on our off of our little tube here, we've got um, the much luck and good fortune. This is going to be our first first part of our card. Okay, I'm using tear and tape on this. You can use your Stampin' Seal Plus on this. I mentioned before that you should try both of them. And the Stampin' Seal and the Stampin' Seal Plus both fit into the same case. So it's really handy because what you can do is get a full um, case and insert of one of them and then just get a refill of the other one. And then they come in these great little plastic bags, they're resealable bags. So whichever one is not in use, you can just put it back into its little resealable bag. It won't get dusty or linty or anything. And um, it's ready for you whenever you want to switch it out. Okay, as I'm putting this on here, I am lining it up with the edge of that crease. Can you guys see that? I don't want to overhang it. I, ju I just want to nudge it right up to there. And um, if I can show you this, maybe get something dark. I can show you here that this designer series paper, in fact, lines up with the designer series paper here, and the cardstock overhangs it. That's because the cardstock is cut to four and a quarter inches, whereas this tube and this front panel here is just cut to four inches. So that will give us this beautiful mat around here, this border. Out on the outside and also on the inside too. So you're not lining it up with the top and the bottom per se, you're lining it up kind of centered on that. I hope that helps. Let's see, I think this is gonna be gorgeous just like this. And yeah, that's how I want it. Okay, I'm gonna use the Stamp and Seal Plus on this panel here. And this is why sometimes I don't like it. It's so sticky that depending on your humidity level in your house, you might have it chew up your paper a little bit. So I use it for certain applications and then uh, I use the stamp and seal for everything. That's the next panel. So let's do, I wanna go back to this one. <laughs> I like my tear tape. It's like perfectly low tech and super sticky. The Stampin' Seal Plus is super sticky as well. But sometimes, and it's always on videotape, you guys. These, um, <laughs> these kind of things always happen, right? I'm saying videotape. Like, 
what year is it? <laughs> it's not videotape anymore. Oh boy. I was just actually watching my mom do her dance news fitness class. Uh, my mom runs a program called Dance News and it's her 40th year and she's now 100% online and just like I am and she was just talking about videotape this morning and I was laughing watching the video recording because I was thinking back to the good old days with her VHS tapes and her massive camcorder in our basement and um, uh, just before you know it you're just obsolete right <laughs> you're using these words that don't apply to um, society anymore kids will look at us like we're crazy <laughs> all right i'm just working my way around here and putting all of these panels on and that is so beautiful isn't it pretty so let's just add a little bit more i'm going to add this beauty on here that really adds a lot to that here i think that looks great okay dimensionals there we go we think we're so young and cool and hip until one day you wake up and it's just like oh it's all gone hey <laughs> you're now part of a different generation how do i want to put this i think like that that would be cool even probably me saying cool is not cool anymore <laughs> i don't even care let's uh i need some <laughs> What do I want to use here? I'm looking for my fine tip glue pen. Not seeing it. I could use a rolled up blue dot. That's the thing is um, everyone kind of has their go-to um, adhesives that they like. And really there's so many that will do the same job. So this one here I'm just going to roll a little bit so it fits under his foot. And I'm going to roll this one too. This is our take, or, take your pick tool, and it's great for these kinds of applications where you're rolling things or paper piercing. There's a little bit left on it. There we go. Okay. Much luck and good fortune. So pretty. Oh, isn't that pretty? And look at how the cranes are just peeking through over there. I couldn't have planned that better if I actually tried. And I definitely did not try. Let's um, finish this panel up with maybe a few of these little sprigs, hey? I think I want to tuck these in behind. Due to the motion of this card, we can't have anything overhanging here because that panel is going to be moving right and folding up so we have to make sure it's just sticking out this way I'm going to take two of those and stick them right onto the same glue dot I'm just kind of offsetting them a little bit so they don't look like exactly the same shape and I can pick them up And I can tuck them in behind here. There we go. So again, doesn't add a color, just adds a little bit of extra interest in that um, that front panel there, right? Are these stuck down? There we go. I might even modify that third one. I do have a third one out. It's disappeared. I don't know where it went. Good thing I got a whole container of them, hey? These are so... Oh, I found it. There we go. Nice try. Hiding from me. I'm just going to use that little bottom piece here. So I'm just going to trim that off. Just by uh, ripping it, really. No, nice way, no nicer way of saying that. I rip it. And stick it under there. Oh, that looks so pretty. You could even curl these up a little bit if you wanted even more drama. They'll, of course, fold flat still when you put them in an envelope. 
but if you do something like that it really adds so much texture and then we've got this panel here which is kind of just beautiful like that isn't it and then this one I think is where I'm going to put in that sending a thousand well wishes on your special day now because this is kind of in the middle of my card I'm not going to pop it up using dimensionals I want it to fold flat ish when you put it into an envelope so I think this this would be perfect should we center it does that look more appealing what do you guys think center off center look at how those peek out so nicely there and then that final panel so we can overhang here but we can't overhang here if we're planning on putting it into that envelope right um, the next thing that we're going to do is address these other blank backs of the panels so we've got four of those and let's choose out some designer series papers that will go nicely with those I was thinking one of these like this one would be really pretty right let's get the paper there again so much fun to play I love creating like this you guys might know that um, majority of my business is actually our monthly card club and we meet every month on the third Monday and Tuesday of the month and it's a, I've been running it for over 14 years now I'll be a demonstrator 15 years in um, a May I can't believe it it's crazy I think I gotta use that one let's see here this one is the perfect size and I just want to double check because I was gonna say an inch and a half and it is an inch and a half and so let's just see how this works our paper trimmer also is fabulous because it's got the ruler that extends on this side here so you can actually line it up and visualize exactly the piece I'm gonna get his little beak on there so I'm not a huge fan of that but let's just see if I try to get this guy so cutting at four inches I think that would be perfect okay so I'm gonna do one and a half inches in I don't even know if you guys know what I'm talking about but I want this this little guy down here so majority of my business is um, built around that worked out perfectly my stamp clubs and um, that means I'm prepping 48 card kits a month so it means that I'm doing a lot of die cutting and paper cutting oh I already have that one I'm going to switch it up and just do a bit of a different one this is kind of fun <laughs> what do I want to do uh, oh I like that one introduce a little bit of a different color and these butterflies that's kind of fun one and a half inches there so it's fun to be able to come on and craft and not think about you know maximizing my paper usage for you know all these people I've got three sheets there and one more one more which one is it going to be I might do this speckles again it's just so beautiful and plain I don't know or what do I want to do here maybe I could do does this one go there or does more of this one go there what do you think I might have to do more of this one the matchy matchy okay let's do that One and a half inches by four inches. There we go. Now I've got my little four pieces there that are ready to go. And before I get too crazy excited, I'm going to make sure to wrap my ribbon around this piece here. I really want to incorporate more of this. That's really pretty, isn't it? And I don't know, just maybe wrapped plain around it think when I'm prepping for my clubs I'm always thinking about okay how can I get 48 of this and have it be fair with everyone right everyone has um, a designer series paper that kind of looks similar that kind of matches the the 
project in the same way. But that being said, I do actually do um, different versions of the cards. So if you are a club member, you might want to talk to me about getting multiple sets each month. Then you can play with each of the color patterns that I have designed. And if you aren't a member of my club, I would love to have you drop in. So in January and in June, sorry, July, I offer signups and those are for six month periods and they give you special perks where you um, where you can actually earn host benefits, you can um, save if you're paying the fee. I do have a fee option so if you aren't looking or aren't thinking that you're going to be spending a minimum of $35 each month then you might want to talk to me about that fee option. I think that's got to go on this one here. Yep. This is perfect. Um, so beyond the January and the June, July, sorry, I've been running this for how many years? <laughs> um, beyond the January and the July signups, you can drop in from month to month and it's free with a minimum $35 order. I'm in Canada, so I can only have people in Canada join me. But if you're in Canada, reach out. I'd love to have you as a part. You can also pay the $20 drop in and you can make the cards along with us. We're 100% online. I mail these cards all over Canada. And um, take a look at my YouTube channel and you can see some of the cards that we've made in the past and even some of the classes that we've had in the past. We have so much fun. And again, it's online the third Monday and Tuesday of every month, but they're on replay forever. So you don't have to worry about if you've got you know, other plans or something like that. Let's finish this card off with some beautiful embellishments. So I'm bringing in some of our polished dots. These come in two different colors. Can you guys see those there? There's some pink ones and some clear ones. And I'm gonna modify some of the clear ones with my Stampin' Blend in the soft succulent color, matchy-matchy. I'm quite a matchy-matchy sort of a person. So this is right up my alley to be able to customize my embellishments. All I'm doing is using my alcohol marker, my stamp and blend, and coloring right on there. And with that, I've got embellishments in whatever color that I want to completely coordinate with any project that I'm working on. I'm gonna do a few of them because I think these would be fun to kind of scatter around. There we go. So let those dry for a second and then once they're dry they'll actually retain their color and they won't rub off or anything like that. You'd have to have alcohol um, spray or even our, um, our clear blend and then that would take it off. But other than that they're not coming off. Let's see here what do we want to do. Something like that is fun. I might even move it up here actually. I'm a fan of that look. Maybe one down here. I used the darker of the two blends, but that color really stuck to it, didn't it? So now it really pops it out. I think that's so pretty. And then this here, uh, I don't know. I just love that so much. I might leave it as is. And then over here, this is going to be the back side of our card. Maybe I use some of the pink to help draw that kind of color scheme in. And I'm trying to think too about how this is folding and making sure that there's not too much bulk. So I might put, hmm. I just have to kind of figure it out, right? Is there, is that the spot? Is this the magic spot? That looks cute. One there. Just that little bit of extra wow factor, right? And then, um, I don't know, I might leave it at that. I think it looks so pretty. I could put some on here, maybe. It's 
kind of fun when they are visible from the front. You get double whammy, right? They, they turn out as embellishments on this front part and this back part. Oh, move that a little bit. There we go. That's so fun. Oh, I love this card. And now the recipient, when they receive it, can put it on their table, on their desk, and, you know, just lay it out there or stand it up there for everyone to see your beautiful work. So fun. Well, I hope you guys had fun. Oh, I should put it back here. I hope you guys had fun crafting with me. I'm going to put the dimensions of the paper down in the comment section of the video. And I'll also put a link to my online store for this um, Train of Fortune suite, which is so much fun to play with. I hope you were inspired by this beautiful artwork. It really is special and it feels um, relaxing and uh, so artistic, doesn't it? I love the wings so beautiful so those along with the designer series paper and um, I'll also put some links to the embellishments as well so um, thanks for crafting along with me or for joining me and watching me and I hope to stand with you again very soon